Good morning, Asia. Happy New Year. I'm back in the saddle here, providing you with the Asian preview and the North American wrap. This is my first day back from the holidays. Um, the biggest mover over during, uh, during our session since, uh, since Asia has been Kiwi Yen, you can take a look here at the daily, had a big move up just over a percent and <clears throat> is approaching some of these old highs. I think this is just a uh, reaction to the, the short Kiwi positions that were out there and the broad dollar weakness that we've seen over the past couple days, um, mainly reflected in, uh, here's Kiwi dollar, you know, also a big up day. But getting into this resistance area here at, at 71.70, we like reselling it. Euro dollars had a monster run up since the end of the year. Uh, this is just post Christmas. We had, uh, you know, rallied up from this 118.50 area. And we got up, you can see today, we got up to a high of 120.89. The high back in uh, September was 120.92. So we got up there. There were some very large offers that uh, presented themselves. In the uh, during the New York session, I think that's going to be a tough nut to crack. And I'm also wondering if you know some of this move that we've seen is just low liquidity momentum type traders getting involved. And you know we saw a similar price action back in January 2017 at the beginning of the year, where the at that time the analysts were all very bullish the dollar going into 2017, and the dollar went pretty much straight down right from the uh, right at the turn of the year. So we, we seem to be seeing similar price action. I don't really trust this though. And you know, I do think if we get a decent NFP number tomorrow, coupled with a, a stronger wage, average hourly, average hourly earnings, uh, like a plus 0.4, plus 0.5, you're gonna see US yields crack that 250 area, the town, the 10 year. And I do think the euro is going to have a tough time up here. And yeah, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we got back down to these kind of just, just post-Christmas levels at, uh, on the 118 handle over the next couple of weeks. So still not 100% um, convinced of this euro dollar move. Uh, you know, you're seeing it in... Cable, although cable today had a had a reversal lower day, uh, the Kiwi dollar, like we looked at earlier, still still looking pretty positive, and that's mainly a positioning thing. Aussie dollar getting close to a big half fib uh, or two thirds fib actually uh, up at seventy eight eighty seven. You're not not far from there, so I'd be careful chasing this dollar weakness. <clears throat> I, I I don't think it's really justified at this point. Take a look at some of the cryptos. Uh, Ripple's been on everyone's uh, radar and been the talk of the town. It's now the second largest market cap behind Bitcoin. You can see the parabolic rise that it's had. Um, you know, back in, uh, I mean, this is crazy. This is early December here. It was a 25 cent crypto. It's gone up to a high of 330 today. It was looking like it wanted to post a doji day. We're going to be, you know, I would keep an eye on that. Again, not, not chasing it. Ethereum, one point was, uh, it touched 1,000, just shy of 1,000. Came back down. We're trading around 950. And Bitcoin continues to just kind of trade sideways. So it seems like they're shifting out of Bitcoin into some of these other cryptos. Litecoin, let's not forget about Litecoin. That was one we looked at a while back. Saw Tom Lee, who is a founder of Litecoin, sold out his uh, all of his Litecoin holdings. I believe it was somewhere around 360, 370. Uh, you know, went up to 420. Then we had that flash crash day on the 22nd, and uh, you know now that's still just consolidating here around the 230 area. So when you see a founder of uh, of, of the crypto selling out all of his holdings you start to wonder how sustainable this rally really is 
Um, again, so we have, uh, in Asia, we've got the Aussie trade balance, really the only economic data coming out of Asia. Then we have the European, the EU CPI, which will be widely followed, especially with Euro near this 121 the figure. Any sort of weak CPI number could see Euro come under pressure. And, uh, and then we have the non-firm payrolls and, uh, non-firm payrolls and the, uh, be paying particular attention to the average hourly earnings. We also have the CAD jobs number at the same time as the, uh, the U S jobs. So it's good to be back in the saddle, uh, not rushing into anything here, keeping, uh, positions small and don't have too strong of views at this point, but, uh, we do expect there could be some action uh, centered around the U.S. data tomorrow. Good luck trading, and we will—you will hear from us on the European Open. All the best.